If you've ever tried to film a vlog, chances are you've sat down to edit, scrolled through the dozens of random clips that you collected, and then asked yourself, what the heck am I gonna do with this? This is the super common problem that almost all beginner vloggers face. This is the moment when the curtains are pulled back for you and you realize that successful vloggers aren't just effortlessly filming clips here and there of their lives, and then it comes together perfectly. They are actively thinking about how they're going to tell a story and how all of their clips and segments are gonna to work together in the edit. But look, I get it, I've been there. You can't always foresee what is going to happen when you're vlogging. You don't know what's gonna end up being an important part of your video. Or you might not know what message you want to share. And that's exactly why I developed the editing process that I'm gonna share with you in today's video. With this workflow, you can take all the clips that you've collected and put them together in a cohesive story that's gonna keep your viewer watching to the end every single time. The first step in editing any good vlog is getting all of your footage organized in one place so you actually know what you're working with. Because I have a collection of different cameras, I like to film my vlogs on my GoPro, my Insta360, my Sony ZV-1, and my phone. So I like to get them all out on my desk and work through importing the footage one by one. I know it might seem silly, but I actually set them out in a line so I know what order that I'm doing them in so I can make sure that I get all the footage off of all the cameras. Now, for the most part, I just take the SD card out of the camera, plug it into my laptop, and then I drag the files over onto my external hard drive where I store all of my vlog footage. As for my phone, I just select all the clips that I filmed on my phone and then I'll airdrop them over to my laptop. Don't fall into the trap of just leaving them in downloads where they automatically show up. No, 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 you're gonna take those clips from downloads, click and drag them over to your actual storage folder. We're all about organization because we don't wanna make our lives more difficult in the future. <laughs> At this point, once I have all the files in that folder, where where all of the footage is gonna live for this vlog, I use this Mac Automator function to automatically rename all my clips by the time that they were filmed. This means I'll be able to easily sort them in chronological order, whether they were filmed on my GoPro or on my phone. The one catch with this, if you're gonna do this, you need to make sure that your cameras are all on the same time zone, especially if you're traveling, just be careful with that. That has definitely burned me in the past because it's not helpful if one of your cameras is in Eastern time zone and the rest are in Pacific and then it's not lining up. If you wanna set this up and you use a Mac, all you need to do is hit the search key and type in automator and it'll bring up the program where you can create this shortcut. Click on quick action and then over in the list of tasks, search for rename finder item. We're gonna eventually add two of these to make it work, but make sure the first one is set to add day or time and then date slash time created. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's added before the name. And then you're gonna make the format hour, minute, second. Then you're gonna add another rename finder item module and you're gonna add very similar parameters except for this time you're gonna make it month, day, year. That way, when you run this action, first it'll add the time that it was filmed, then it'll add the date. So the final file name will be date, time, original file name. You're gonna be so organized, you're not gonna know what to do with all your free time. Once we have all of our footage beautifully organized in chronological order on our external hard drive, it is time to move on to the second step, which is culling our footage and identifying the scenes. So you're gonna import all of your footage into Premiere Pro or whatever editor you're using. I personally have been a long time diehard Premiere Pro user, but just recently I've been experimenting with DaVinci Resolve, which I'm very curious about because it has a completely free version. I know I don't do a ton of editing tutorials on this channel, but let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing some tips about that because I just think that's a huge game changer for creators to have a free editing software. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep things general so whether you're using Premiere or Resolve or Final Cut or whatever, the same general workflow will apply. So you're going to start going through your clips, every single one. I know it's going to take a while, but it's important. What I do is I just click and drag each file from its bin over to the source monitor where I can watch through the clip. I'll set in and out points just by using the I and O keyboard shortcuts. If that sounds complicated to you, it's really not. It's just kind of trimming off the beginning and end of the clip that you don't want. And then usually what I'll do is if it's an A roll clip where I actually want to have like the dialogue or or the background noise or whatever, I want to have the audio with it, I'll just click on the video clip itself and drag both the audio and video onto the timeline. If it is going to be for sure a B-roll clip, I don't want the audio that came with that clip, then I'll just click on the little video icon and drag that only into the timeline. And so at this point, I'm just like roughly shaping them out into scenes. This is all just in chronological order. I might shake that up later, but at this point, we just wanna figure out what footage we have for each different moment from the day. 
A fun hack in Premiere Pro which can help you stay more organized is you can add an adjustment layer and essentially just use it as a little label. This isn't necessarily what adjustment layers are meant for, but you can change the color of the little layer, you can change the label so that on your timeline you can have your scenes labeled if that helps you remember what was happening in each one. Now this is an important part when it comes to storytelling. As I am building out these scenes and kind of paying attention to what the sequences are going to look like or what's actually happening in that moment, I start to really consider what I think the emotion of that moment is going to be. Is this an action-packed and exciting kind of adventure sequence? Or is it more reflective and serious? Or maybe it's just silly and goofy. This determination is obviously going to be based on what I was saying to the camera in that moment, or the type of b-roll that I captured, or like the vibe of that experience. This is where you get to start making the fun creative decisions, and I think music plays a huge part into that. I really like to be mindful of the videos not coming across as one note. What comes to mind for me for this as a really apt metaphor is a common critique that some of the queens will get on Drag Race where if you come out in your performance just going crazy from the start, if you come out at a 10, there's nowhere to go. So the performance kind of feels flat. But if you come out at a 5 and then you work up to a 10, come back down to an 8, and then go to a 10 for the big finish, that feels like a really exciting performance. You want to think about doing the same thing with your vlogs. If the entire thing just has a background track of like bumping electronic club music, it's really not going to feel like the ebb and flow of a story that people are looking for. But if you have some more calm and reflective moments paired with some more action-packed adventurous moments and then bring it back down to more serious and then have something a little funny, that's the kind of thing that keeps people engaged and keeps people interested. And a huge way that you can influence that is with the music, so just keep that in mind. Now as you're going through your footage you might start to realize that there are some sections where where you don't have enough visuals to really get across the story that you wanted to tell. This can often be the case, especially with travel vlogs, because you get so busy just exploring and seeing new things, it can be hard to remember to film everything you wanna film. Like for example, I think it's super helpful with travel vlogs to have nice establishing shots where you see a wide view of the city, maybe even some drone footage. If you weren't able to capture that yourself, which in many cases you probably won't be able to, that is where the sponsor of today's video, Story Blocks, comes in. I'm myself am a long-term happy user of Storyblocks and it has really come in handy during different vlog edits and even for the visuals that I create for this channel. If you haven't heard of them before, Storyblocks is a stock media library that offers unlimited downloads of stock footage, animation templates, sound effects, background music. So you don't have to worry about paying for each asset individually with your subscription, you can get as much as you want. For my travel vlogs, I'm constantly jumping on story blogs to grab some nice establishing shots, maybe like a time lapse of a crowd walking through Rome or some drone footage of the Colosseum. This is a really great hack, I think especially for aerial footage because if you don't have a drone or oftentimes you're in a place where you're not allowed to fly a drone unless you have special permission, that's where story blocks can really come in handy. But there's more than just stock footage. I use animation templates from story blocks all the time for my coffee chat series I have this little liquid pouring effect that I use I also use these like visual textures this paper background this film grain and there's so many examples like that Storyblocks is constantly updating their library with new commission pieces based on customer demand and you never have to worry about using any of the clips in your video you're not gonna get content ID because everything is hundred percent covered and royalty free also exciting news as of today Storyblocks is releasing animation templates for DaVinci Resolve so if you edit in Resolve that's going to be super helpful for you and I'm excited to try that out too. Okay so to get all the visuals that you need for a dynamic engaging vlog go to storyblocks.com slash katie or check out the link in the description. I promise it's going to totally change your videos. It's time to get out your notebooks for the next step y'all because we are building out the story of our vlog. We've got a timeline of scenes. We've even got a few music tracks selected that we think we're going to use. It's time to figure out how we're going to make the transitions make sense. Otherwise the viewer is going to feel like a little bit of a whiplash. They're gonna wonder why am I seeing this? It doesn't really make sense compared to what I just saw. There are several ways to do this, but it really comes down to your stylistic choice. You can do voiceovers. This is a great option if you're the kind of person that collects a ton of b-roll but you forget to talk to your camera. You can do a voiceover after the fact. If this is your style, you could do like interviews or like confessionals the way they do on like reality TV or in documentaries. I really don't see a ton of YouTubers doing this, but I think one really great example is the series made by Becky and Chris. If you ever 
ever watch any of their helicopter travel series. Becky does an amazing job of like setting up these beautiful sets where they then like deliver their interviews. So check those out if you want some inspo for that. If you're going for a more chill ASMR vibe for your vlog, then you could always add text on screen to kind of describe what's happening. Now it's totally up to you which direction you go. And I think it's partially going to be based on the vibe of your video, how you want it to feel to your viewers, and also what your audience is going to enjoy the most. For my travel vlogs, I tend to go the voiceover route because I have so much B-roll and honestly, it's easier. <laughs> okay, so once I have all my footage out in a timeline in these kind of different blocks of scenes, I'll get my notebook out and I'll write down what the major moments are. What are the main scenes and the main stories that are happening in this video? Maybe we start by going to a museum and then we go explore downtown. And then after that, we go to a restaurant for dinner and there's gaps in between. Otherwise it's just kind of like cut, we're in a new place. That's kind of confusing. So that's the area where I'm gonna write a bit of a voiceover to explain moving from one thing to the next. Now, what you wanna avoid here is just writing a voiceover that is literally descriptive of what you're seeing on screen. So like first we were at the museum and then we drove down the street and then we ended up downtown. That's like boring. Like we can obviously see that from what's on screen. So instead share with us how you were feeling, what you learned from that experience. So in this example that I'm showing you now in this vlog, when we were in Memphis, Tennessee, I could have literally just said, so first we went to the museum and we saw all these really cool displays. Here I am checking out this display on Rosa Parks and then we went downtown Memphis to see Beale Street and we passed the Orpheum Theater on the way. Okay, that, that's a really boring way to describe this. Instead, this was the approach that I took. After Nashville, it was on to Memphis. Our first stop in Memphis was the National Civil Rights Museum, which is housed in the historic Lorraine Motel. It's an incredibly informative museum with lots of powerful displays and I'm really glad that we took the time out to see it. However, Memphis is not only known for so many different ways to tell a story and it's gonna depend on your style and what you think your audience is gonna connect with. All right, it's time to finally edit. You thought we were editing this whole time? Yeah, we kind of were, but mostly we were selecting the raw footage and we were recording extra voiceover so we can bring it all together in our actual final assembly. So this is the step where you're gonna actually start cutting to the music, shortening your clips down to their actual final length, and blending your B-roll with your A-roll. At this point, you might even move scenes around entirely if you want to go for kind of like a flashback moment, or if you just wanna tell your story in a different order than chronological, that's totally an option. But really at this point, we're just executing on the plan and vision that we finalized during our story building step, and now we're doing it in our video editor. I'm gonna share a few rapid fire tips with you right now, because like I said, I'm keeping this general, we're not diving into each specific specific video editor, so this can apply to anybody, but again, let me know if you want a more in-depth tutorial in the comments. Okay, you're gonna wanna make your clips way shorter than you usually think. B-roll clips could honestly be two to three seconds long. You don't wanna dwell on something forever, it's gonna start to get boring. That being said though, it's also important that the length of your clips corresponds to the mood of that scene. If you're doing a more fast-paced, high-energy adventure scene, then yeah, maybe you cut between them very quickly. But if you're in a more reflective, sort of calm vibe, then maybe you stretch those b-roll clips out to like five or eight seconds. This is where you can really see that like the music, the length of clips, all these different factors really go into imbuing an emotion in your video. Another quick tip, J and L cuts are gonna be your best friend. This will make your edit feel more dynamic and pacey and just more professional. So when you want to transition from like an A-roll talking to camera segment to some B-roll, what you can do is extend that audio out below your B-roll clip. So as you're talking, B-roll comes in over top. We call this an L cut because it's kind of shaped like an L on the timeline. You can do the same thing in reverse. It's called a J cut. That's when your talking starts coming in before we actually see your face. So the audio extends out under the B-roll that precedes the A-roll. 
finally last tip use your music to your advantage when it comes to transitioning scenes I don't know how I didn't think of this before but back in the day when I was editing vlogs when I got to the end of my scene and my music was inevitably like longer than that scene I would just cut it where it is and do a fade out and call it good and that can work but what I find is really effective is just simply cutting out the middle section of your track and taking the end of your music track to the end of your scene and kind of blending those two pieces of the track together earlier so then your music can actually have its ending at the same time that your scene is ending and it just all feels a lot more cohesive obviously you're going to want to make sure that the point where those two pieces of the track blend you know sound good together but a lot of background music tends to have pretty like repetitive sections so it's not that hard to do that okay we've made it to our final step it's time to watch back through your video and then export it now i think it's really important to watch back your video with a kind of critical eye looking for any small places where you can make things a little bit pacier or a little bit of a tighter edit or add something that's a little bit more engaging or interesting let's be honest a lot of us can get editing fatigue so when you get to the last third of your video you're kind of phoning it in because you want to get it done or maybe that's just me <laughs> but that's why it can be sometimes good to finish your edit like the night before and then the next day go back and watch through it all and just like clean it up here and there but it's also time to just sit back and appreciate your work because like you did that. I always find vlogs are the most satisfying kinds of videos to watch back after the fact because you made like a little movie out of your life. Like that's so fun. And someday years from now, you're going to be so appreciative to your past self for documenting your adventures. And hopefully some other people like strangers on the internet now will also appreciate it. So that is my creative process for taking a bunch of random clips from my life, from my travels and turning it into a cohesive story and a cohesive video that people are actually gonna wanna watch. Now, another very important component of making vlogs is actually filming them. And if you're currently trying to figure out what vlog camera might be the best for you, then you should definitely check out this video I made because I tested out a ton of different vlogging setups so that you don't have to. So you can take away from this video what camera you might want to get. As always, thank you so much for watching, friends. I hope that you're having adventures and following your dreams, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!